trauma typically is associated with war veterans, but the nature of chronic chaos, unpredictability or unpredictability have a huge negative impact because what happens is you chronically activate your sympathetic nervous system or this flight, fight, or freeze response because you never know what's going to happen next. As a result, your muscles are chronically tense. You're always looking around waiting for the unexpected. And many of these children grow up with what we would call post-traumatic stress disorder. And as a result, if you cannot relax, if you can't be present, then it's very hard to function in normal society. And sadly, this is the case with so many children. And as a result, they lose hope. They fall into despair. They give up. And then it's a spiral downward. What was different for me, and I, I preface this by saying I never felt that my parents did not love me. I felt ignored by my parents. But that was because they did not have the tools to deal with their own issues, much less uh, deal with their children. Um, but what changed the trajectory of my life was one day I had gotten on my bicycle and I was far away from home. I ended up at a strip mall and in the strip mall was a magic shop. And when I walked into the magic shop and I had an interest in magic for some time, there was a woman there and it turned out she was the owner's mother. The owner was doing an errand and she knew nothing about magic. But what she did know about was people. And she greeted me with, and I'm sure you met people like this who have a radiant smile and presence, uh, just this kindness emanated from her. And as a result, I felt safe. And of course, for someone to open up to share their feelings, one has to have a sense of psychological safety. And that's what she gave me. And as a result of that, I felt comfortable speaking with her and telling her the truth, essentially. And she asked some penetrating questions, which I answered. And after about 20 or 30 minutes, she said to me, she said, I really like you. I'm here for another six weeks. And if you show up every day, I think I can teach you something that could really help you. Now, to be honest with you, I had zero self-awareness. I didn't know exactly what this entailed. But the reality was that I had absolutely nothing else to do, and she was very kind, and she was giving me chocolate chip cookies. So I did show up every day. And How old were you at this point? I was uh, about 12 and a half. Okay. And uh, so during that period of six weeks, she taught me several things. Now, you have to remember, this was before mindfulness or neuroplasticity were in the common lexicon of society. These were, in fact, unusual terms. But what she taught me was a mindfulness practice. She taught me how to relax my body because I had no understanding that my muscles were tense all the time or that I was constantly looking around. And as I'm sure you can appreciate, if you're like a goldfish in an aquarium and the water's dirty, you don't realize you're swimming in dirty water all the time. And I had no realization that my muscles were tense or that I couldn't focus. And she taught me what is now called a body survey or a way to relax my muscles. And this was followed by focusing in this case, on a candle, although she could teach me a mantra type of exercise. And this allowed me to focus and be present. And from this, she made me understand that the negative dialogue that was constantly going, in, going on in my head uh, was not truth. And I'm sure many people think that the statements they're telling themselves are based in truth. But in fact, we have something called negativity bias, which is baggage we carry from our evolution as a species, and negative things have a tendency to stick to us. And statements that are made about us or that we interpret as negative oftentimes get embedded in our subconscious, and we repeat them. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm an imposter. I don't deserve love. And she taught me that these were not truth. 
and that in fact, I could change those negative statements to ones of positive self-affirmation. And while, of course, it didn't take it all away, it certainly toned it down and it gave me insights, one, into those statements were not true, and two, that I do deserve to be loved or that I am worthy, that I'm not an imposter. And then this changed how I looked at the world because when I was less or self-critical, I was also less hypercritical of those around me. And as a result, I gained insight and awareness that it wasn't an issue that my parents didn't like me or didn't care about me. It was they just did not have their own tools to help themselves. So my anger and hostility towards my parents or my situation changed. What happens is that when you carry negativity around with you, in many ways, it emanates from your body. And there's a whole amount of literature in terms of this electromagnetic energy that emanates from us. And certainly if it's positive, you get a positive response from others. If it's negative, people are cautious or turn away or avoid you. And so what I tell people is that once I changed how I looked at the world, the world changed how it looked at me. And it turned out that it wasn't that people didn't like me at all. It was the energy was that I was emanating. And in fact, when that changed, people reached out to help me. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day. So make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to love this one as well. And if you ever want to see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.